Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about two of the things that have entertained me just tremendously over the years. One of those, mathematics. I love math. The other is I love The Simpsons. Um, I think they hit their stride after the first couple seasons. It got great, I thought. Just I still like watching the old episodes. I think they kind of hit gotten a bit of a rut for a while, but I think actually the newer episodes, I don't have cable to be honest, so I only watch one periodically. Um, but I think the newer episodes over the past couple years have actually gotten better, which is good. That makes me happy. So I hated to see them go in, in a, a downward spiral. But it actually turns out in The Simpsons there are just tons and tons and tons of little math jokes and um, just actually really cool tidbits of, of mathematical knowledge. A lot of them I have caught over the years. A lot of them have gone right over my head. I've just been oblivious to them because a lot of them are very subtle. And in this video I want to talk about, you know, just some of those mathematical tidbits and just, you know, why they're interesting. What's cool about them? You know, what is the joke that they're trying to get across? And Maybe it's not even necessarily a joke, but they're just trying to introduce you to some to some neat new things. So, and one of the well in the video, the you know the the episode we're going to talk about here, they actually go to a baseball game and they have to you know the 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 question that appears is you know what's the you know guess the attendance at the baseball game. So they give three choices, and you know they look like very innocuous numbers. You know they're no big deal, and again it would be something you could just watch and you know. If I watched it, I would think there's got to, there's something about those numbers, right? I mean, they just, I don't think they, you know, the the writers of The Simpsons are too clever just to pick random numbers. So I would think there's got to be something about those numbers, but what is it? So I want to talk about what's interesting about the attendance figures at this baseball game. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the three numbers that appear in the game. So we've got the choice of 8,191 people, 8,128 people, 8,208 people, and answer choice D, no way to tell. So, again, if you're watching this, you know, I would probably think, you know, hey, there's three numbers, but there's definitely some interesting things about those three numbers. So, let's take a look at what makes these three numbers interesting and, and talk about, you know, where they come from in general. Okay, the first number we're going to look at is 8,191, and this is actually a number that's known as a Mersin prime. And a Mersenne prime is a prime number that has the form, we take 2 and we raise it to the power of P. And the interesting thing is P is also a prime number. And then we subtract 1 away from this quantity. So let's look at some examples of some Mersenne primes. And Mersenne primes are, are one of the interesting things about them is that they get... They're, they're ginormous, but we're going to look at some small values. So, okay, so the idea is we look at 2 raised to a power of p, where p is a prime number, minus 1. And it actually looks like maybe at first, you know, you're going to get a prime number every time. So, you know, here's my prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. Well, 2 to the second, minus 1, that gives us 3. That's definitely a prime number. 2 to the 3rd minus 1, that's going to give us 7, which is also a prime number. 2 to the 5th minus 1, that's going to give us 31, which is a prime number. 2 to the 7th minus 1, that gives us the value 127, which is also a prime number. Now we've got 2 to the 11th minus 1, that gives us 2047, which actually is not a prime number. It turns out that you can write 2047 as 23 multiplied by 89. So that's the first one here that, that's going to fail. But the rest of them in the list works. 2 to the 13th minus 1, that's our number, 8,191. 2 to the 17th minus 1, that's 131,071. That turns out to be a prime number. And 2 to the 19th minus 1 is 5, that 524,000. 287, which is also a prime number. It turns out, uh, I believe it was in 2013, they found a huge prime number. And it turns out that that prime number, that Mersenne prime, was 2 raised to the power of 57,885,000.
161. You can check this, uh, this number, this exponent is in fact a prime number. Minus one, it turns out this number is in fact prime. And uh, the interesting thing about it too is if you were to expand this, it would actually be 17 million digits long which is pretty amazing. So mathematicians have known for a long time that there are in fact infinitely many prime numbers, but as of yet still, there's not a good way to, to, to find those numbers. Other, all you do is just a brute force check and you, know, you, you pick a number and you just start seeing if it factors or not using, you know, using computers. So, so that's an example of, of a Mersenne prime and that was the, uh, the little mathematical tidbit behind the number uh, 80, 8191. So the next number we're going to take a look at will be the number 8,128. And this is actually what's known as a perfect number. So there's actually an interesting connection between perfect numbers and Mersenne primes that we just saw as well. So let's look at some examples of what a perfect number is, and we'll talk about that connection between the Mersenne primes and perfect numbers. So perfect numbers basically have to do with how the numbers factor and with addition. So here on the left side, I've got the first four perfect numbers listed, 6, 28, 496, 8,128. And on the right side, I have the factors of each of those four numbers. But notice I have the number itself in each case crossed out. Okay, so the factors of 6, 1, 2, 3, and 6. Uh, let's omit the 6, 28, 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, uh, 28. Again, we'll omit the 28. So what makes a number perfect? is the idea is if we take those factors and add them up, right? If we add one plus two plus three, we in fact get six. Likewise, if you take one plus two plus four plus seven plus 14, it's gonna add up to 28. You can verify that if you take, ooh, okay, we're gonna write a lot of numbers. One plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64, plus 127, plus 254, plus 508, plus 1016, plus 2032, plus 4064, you do in fact get 8,128. So I think that's pretty cool, you know, the way that the factors add up to the number itself. So it's in that sense that the number is perfect. And just a little historical tidbit, it turns out that the ancient Greeks knew about these first four um, perfect numbers, but it actually took over a thousand years before um, before they found the next perfect number. Um, it took a long time before they, they found the next perfect number, so it's not an easy task to do. They become very sparse in the number line. So um, Rene Descartes had a little quote. He said, perfect numbers like perfect men are very rare. So there you go. So I mentioned that there was a neat connection between the Mersenne primes and the perfect numbers. And it turns out that once you have a Mersenne prime, you can actually use that to construct a perfect number. I'm not sure on the details on how it's done, but um, there's definitely a connection between the two. And it turns out that we only know about 48 perfect numbers because we actually only know about 48 Mersenne primes. So kind of an interesting relationship there, I think. So that just leaves us with one number left to discuss, and that would be the number 8,208. And this is actually what's known as a narcissistic number. So who thought numbers could be narcissistic? Who knew? I didn't know. But it turns out, in fact, that there are numbers that are narcissistic. So what makes a number narcissistic? How can, you know, how can a number possibly be narcissistic? What properties must it have? So let's take a, a look at a, 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 the example of what makes 8,208 narcissistic. And we'll look at some other examples as well. So what makes a number narcissistic? The idea is you look at the digits that comprise the number and we look at the number of digits. So here there are four digits. And what we do is we look at each one of those numbers, eight, and we're gonna add them together. So we've got eight, we've got two, we've got zero, we've got eight, but we don't just add those together. We also, since we have four digits, what we do is we raise each one of these numbers to the fourth power. And it turns out eight to the fourth plus two to the fourth plus zero to the fourth plus eight to the fourth 
if you simplify that, you get 8,208. So I think this is kind of the terminology behind them being called narcissistic. It, you know, the number is just so in love with itself, it's using its, its own digits to, to produce itself. So um, very narcissistic indeed. So a couple other examples of some narcissistic numbers. Turns out 153 is a narcissistic number. It turns out that 9,474 is also a narcissistic number, another four-digit one. Um, 548,834, that is also a narcissistic number. So again, notice for this, we've got six digits, so everything's being raised to the sixth power. And the largest of them all, how could we leave that one out? So this is all the same number. I just had to run out of room. So I'm not even gonna try to, to say that number. You can go for it yourself. So that is the largest known narcissistic number and there's not any past that. So again, I think pretty interesting, um, you know, just some, some definitely some new spins on some numbers that I have never seen before. All right, so I hope you have enjoyed my little uh, tidbits about some of the numbers that have popped into the Simpsons episodes. And maybe one closing thought, you know, it's been conjectured, um, although, you know, not, not definitively uh, verified, but maybe the, the writers of the Simpsons picked those numbers because, well, Tabitha Vix, she was the, 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 the person on the Jumbotron. And if you've seen the episode, you know, Tabitha thought she was perfect and in her prime, and she was also a bit of a narcissist. So if the, uh, the writers of The Simpsons had that in mind when they came up with that joke, shows, you know, gives me proof positive that I could never uh, write stuff like they do. That would blow my mind if that was the reason they did it. That would be a very subtle and very impressive mathematical joke, I think. So anyways, once again, I hope you like this. If you want to see some more videos like this, just uh, feel free to post comments in the, uh, the comment section. And again, you know, just a fun little video. I mean, uh, um, I learned a lot just by uh, reading up on some of this stuff myself. So all right, I hope you all liked it and I'll see you soon.